Well, today I'm with Rachel Adams, who's an expert in all things cleaning, restoration, disinfection, and health. She's an environmental health expert. So Rachel, how are you today? I am great, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to have you. What are you up to these days? What What are you doing um, for work? Well, um, I've been with a Ramsco for the last almost three years. And over the last 12 months, I've transferred into um, a corporate account manager role. So it's a little bit different than doing, you know, teaching and instructing classes. So it's a it's really a, a career change, even though I still get to do a little teaching here and there, but you know, moving into a sales role, that's a whole different world. Yeah, I imagine so. But well, congratulations. I know you're in a good spot with the Ramsco. Hey, uh, we're, we're actually getting together today to talk about a project you worked on, a writing project for Clean Facts. So it's coming up in the next issue, the January, February issue of Clean Facts. And it's a technical article that'll be in the IICRC section. It's called Avoid Unhealthy Scenes, and it's about what cleaning professionals can do and what they should know about cleaning and disinfecting floors. Now, in the article, uh, you discuss high touch points. And I'm, I'm like, Rachel, I want this to be about flooring, but uh, maybe you didn't get my email. Tell me about that. Well, you know, I think we have been, especially with all the COVID things happening and all the infection control cleaning processes that are being done, I think we automatically think of high touch point surfaces as being things like doorknobs and handles and, you know, the, and keyboards, those types of things. And I think we often forget that floors are one of our biggest high touch point areas, just between foot traffic and everything else that's moved on and off flooring that can, you know, transfer contaminants. Exactly. You walk on a floor and who knows what's being kicked up uh, from that and then ending up on other surfaces or, or we breathe that in. Yeah. Exactly. So, so this article is really cool and folks and folks will see it soon in print and in digital. Uh, one part of the article, you mentioned that an important component to successful disinfecting or sanitizing is adhering to dwell times. You know, as an old carpet cleaner, uh, we're told to put down our product and let it sit there a while. Uh, what are some common dwell times that you see on, with products today that we need to know about? I would say on average for most of the products used in the cleaning and restoration industry, you're looking at between a five and 10 minute dwell time. I'd say the most common is 10 minutes. Yeah, so if someone doesn't follow that, if they put it down and take it back up, what are they missing out on? What they're missing out on, the efficacy of the product. I mean, there's a reason why they give you that dwell time. And by not adhering to that dwell time, we, can't know, we cannot go back and ensure that we've achieved you know, what we're intending to achieve with using that product on that surface. We might think we've left it as a disinfected or sanitized surface when in fact, without the correct dwell time, then we're not even close to maintaining that, that efficacy. One more point before we, we uh, part ways here. Sanitizing and disinfecting, two different things. Could you explain the difference quickly for us, which is also part of your article? And it really all comes back down to the surfaces that we're working with. So depending on whether it's porous or non-porous, that all determines what are we achieving? Is it disinfecting or is it sanitizing? Yeah. Well, Rachel, I'm sure that uh, your article, this technical piece in Clean Facts will be well received. Folks will look forward to it. You might get a couple of emails with more questions once people, once people read it. But thank you for your time today. And uh, we'll touch base soon at a trade show or somewhere in the future. I hope so. Take care, Jeff. All right. Have a good one.